Good morning, garden friends. Um, today we are going to be uh, talking with Hillary from our giving garden. Um, one of the things that I, I look at is gardening is beyond just our front yard. Um, it's also about how and what we do impact our community. So uh, what I wanted to do was have a discussion with Hillary in regards to uh, the impact our giving garden is having on the community. So come along with me while we talk with her and then take a walk around to see some of the things that they are doing to help out the community. Just started a little side market garden um, on some of my parents' land and my husband jokingly said, are, are you ever gonna do anything that's not outside or some sort of like hustle that has to do with plants? I'm like, probably not. I'm not wrong with that, not very wrong with that. Uh, good afternoon, garden friends. And like I said, I was gonna be meeting and talking with Hillary in regards to our giving garden um, and just talk a little bit about what they do for the community programs that they may have and then opportunities that where um, we as residents can also help out and um, on her journey in regards to our giving garden so Hillary tell me a little bit about number one yourself how did you evolve to this <laughs> right yeah so um, I grew up about 30 seconds down the road from here. My, my family had sort of a, a homestead garden and I moved away, uh, started working on farms, went to grad school and realized that my passion was not only farming and local food and gardening, but also the food access piece of people having access to the freshest, best nutrient food that they could get. and. Um, I was looking for volunteer opportunities and I happened to just find that the garden was here about 30 seconds from my childhood home and it was meant to be. Nice, so. nice. Now how long have this been in operation? So the garden was started in 2016. I started as a volunteer in 2018. It was started by um, Judy Byler, our CEO and finder, founder, and it was started by herself and just a group of friends who basically said, um, we just want to help feed the neighborhood and start a community garden. Um, so this land was originally owned by the neighboring church. Mm -hmm. And at that time they said, we're not using it. You want to help feed people? Great. Nice. You know, you can use the land. Um, a couple years down the road, they decided to sell the land. They gave the garden first dibs. Mm -hmm. And Judy and our board members and some of our other core staff fundraised $70,000 nice. for um, to purchase the land. So the garden now owns the land and um, you know, it's, it's ours. Yeah, and you wanted something like it, like I said before, with gardening, it is beyond just your, your backyard and what you guys are doing to help the community is so inspiring, you know, and like I said, when it was mentioned, hey, reach out to you and me just doing my own research and how many lives you guys touch is just so inspiring in itself. Um, now, how many volunteers do you, you guys have? So we have um, what we call sort of our core volunteers. Mm -hmm. So that is our board members, our people who come and take care of the animals three, four or five times a week. Those people, we probably have 20, 25 people who are here few times a week, several times a week, every day. Yeah. Um, and then we have our volunteers who come for our volunteer work days. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes those people come once, sometimes they come once a quarter, but I would say generally we have hundreds of, of volunteers on any given season. Um, volunteer groups, corporate work groups, school groups, those are our bread and butter. So nice. we rely very, very heavily on volunteer support and that can range from weeding to harvesting to um, helping mow the lawn. Yeah. You know, volunteers are very, very important Good. to what we do. Now, I noticed when I came in here, uh, kids. What, 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 what's, what's that about? Yes. Yeah, so, um, 
our core mission is food access and feeding people, mm -hmm. but another huge part of our mission is education. Um, so education and green space access are some things we combine together to try to give youth and children um, some resources for outdoor play in the mm -hmm. community. So we have um, camps. We currently have our last week of summer camp going on. We have camps going on every school break. Um, we have after school programs, classes, and they're all outdoors. So it's just giving chance for kids to learn about being environmental stewards, taking care of animals, gardening, sustainability, yeah. just trying to instill that. Yeah, that is so nice. And you know, it's just, this is so funny because my um, granddaughter who is five, I'll end up coming over, you know, to the house and I'll tell her, oh, you know, Nana's going to be doing a video. And she, I said, you want to be in the video? And she's like, am I going to have to be working? And I'm like, <laughs> yep, you're going to have to be working. Because I do. I, I, when, when we look at, you know, and people may not believe that we have a serious, you know, global issue, you know, but my thing is teach the young people yes. you know so that they can understand this is an investment in their future you know so i like i said i am just so loving what you guys are doing here and i can't wait for us to walk around and you tell me a little bit more about the different things that you guys end up doing so now when when, when you talk about you know uh, being able to provide you know healthy food what what does that volume look like how many families are you guys impacting so we give uh, food in a few different ways. Okay. So we have um, our food pantry donation program that is mainly through Sweetwater Mission Food Pantry in Austell. Okay. Um, we have a free pantry and free fridge up by our front gates and that is um, stocked with our produce and volunteers also come and stock shelf stable goods anytime they want. Um, and then additionally we have a monthly food bank and um, that's in partnership with a uh, your new best friend pet rescue and food bank mm -hmm. and they provide sort of bulk grocery items we provide our produce and eggs um, so between those those three things i would say we're serving hundreds of families nice. a month um, you know with the the free fridge that is more of a um an open system choice system so mm -hmm. We're not giving it to people directly, but people are taking whatever they want yeah. and whatever they like and they know how to cook. And that's yeah. pretty important to us as well. Nice, nice. Well, you know, this is like so informative. I'm ready to get out here and, All right, and check it. this out, okay? Cool. So let's go. Okay, so this is our main growing space over here. Um, our property is about three and a half acres and our growing space is around a quarter of an acre. Mm -hmm. um, we really pack it in, <laughs> in our garden. Uh, just to give you an idea, we grew um, 3,500 pounds of food on this little area wow. last year. So um, there's definitely ways to grow a lot of food in a small space for anyone who has small <laughs> gardens. Um, we use a couple of different methods. Um, we are not certified organic, but we do use organic methods, which means we're using no pesticides, no synthetic fertilizers, that sort of thing. Um, but we use a combination of permaculture techniques called swales. So it's hard to see with all the weeds that are happening right now, but we are using some curved mounded beds called contour swales and that's a rainwater conservation technique so that we have to rely less on traditional irrigation mm. um, and then we further down we'll walk around and I'll show you but we use just traditional in-ground rows with some drip irrigation tape okay okay nice that is interesting I had never heard of that because I, I still water my garden by hand I have just not graduated to the drip system because I think sometimes it, <laughs> I don't like weeds. Okay, so um, yep. when I water by hand, if I see them, I'm grabbing them, you know, so, totally. but this is just totally amazing. We just transitioned to drip irrigation last year, so mm -hmm. it's very new, um, but we did sort of get to a point where it was like, gosh, we got to start streamlining some of our systems, yeah. um, you know, because volunteers aren't always available yeah. to hand water or to weed and... 
So this is just one of our new systems. That okay, we have. nice. Oh, that is just unique. registered people's garden with the USDA um, so that just means that we're registered through the USDA as being a garden that is helping a community be more resilient is helping to increase local food access and encourage people to eat healthier nice okay very good and that's always nice when you end up getting recognized for the work that you're doing This is what we call our uh, our wild space or um, park area of our property. This is where we have a lot of our um, after school programs, camps. We have a forest preschool that leases from us it's also there Monday through Friday. But we also have um, a food forest. We have some about 25 fruit and nut trees that were gifted to us through the Giving Grove and Foodwell Alliance. And um, we're hoping in about four to five years to regularly have hundreds of pounds. Wow. We also have some perennial fruit trees in our garden space. So we've got some blueberry bushes over here, um, persimmon trees. Okay, now that's bringing back memories. I'm smelling manure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, sure that's the farm the girl. Area. That's the farm girl in me. Yeah. Now look at this, guys. Just plentiful, whether it is flowers or the vegetables that they are providing for the community. It's very impressive. And I'll make sure I get information from Hillary on how, if you want to help out on this great cause, this is just amazing. Okay, so moving on down here, we're going more towards our animal area of the property. Um, so we have a... Um, working animal program and educational animal program mm -hmm. which means that all of our animals have a job at the garden <laughs> here but they all happen to also be friendly and good with kids because the kids get to learn from them right this area over here is our new educational garden bed area so we've got some sensory herb beds a grain garden a bug motel This here is our goat and donkey yard. So we have six um, miniature goats <laughs> um, and two miniature donkeys. Um, and if you look up on that hill, we also have four beehives. Oh, wow. So, no, so I'm assuming you're producing your own honey. Yes. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes, we're hoping to harvest in a couple of weeks here. Good, 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 good. Yeah. So our goats are mostly for land clearing is their job. <laughs> so you see they've cleared their uh, their goat enclosure pretty well, but they take out a lot of our kudzu. Wow. Um, a lot of ivy. Oh, hi there. They do a good job. <laughs> <laughs> In addition 
to our goats and donkeys, we also have a chicken flock. <laughs> so they uh, are in this nice red chicken coop. We just had a volunteer group repaint it. Um, our chickens are all very used to people. They're all very friendly. They all have names and little anklets. Um, and we, their job is to produce eggs for uh -huh. us to donate, but also the kids love learning about chickens. Yeah. Now, how many do you have and how many eggs do they produce for you? We have about 30 chickens right now. And during high season, so during sort of peak of summer, we're getting anywhere from seven to nine dozen a week. Nice. Um, they're starting to molt, so they're they're going on strike a little bit right now. Oh. <laughs> Are sort of free ranging back and oh, nice. back there. Oh. <laughs> Tell you, it brings back so many memories growing up on a farm. Um, over to our bunnies. two bunnies um they produce lots of amazing fertilizer manure <laughs> to use in the garden bunnies and goats are two of the farm animals that you don't need to compost their manure at all you can just put it straight in the nice. garden and it won't burn the plant see if i can wrangle a bunny out uh, we have these locks on here because the kids have learned how to help the bunnies escape. Oh, wow. <laughs> Namely, my, my two-year-old son. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if they'll let me get it. The honey bunny likes to give me the runaround. Oh. Sometimes. Determined. Yes. Oh, no, he <laughs> ran back in the trap. Yep. Oh. Bunnies, there are celebrities. <laughs> I see if Jaden, our intern, can snag them while we're um, And then this structure here is the, what we call the giving house. Mm -hmm. So this is the sort of the farmhouse on the property. We use it for um, community space. We do uh, classes on the far end of the house inside. The main portion of the house is sort of community meeting space, classroom space, um, event space. And then we have a long-term tenant who lives in a studio apartment who's on um, Seth Stye's rent. She's just a great community member. Nice. We've loved having her here and she's been here for a few years. Yeah, I, I love the fact of just the full circle, the full circle that you guys are representing and executing. So that is so very nice. grab a honey bunny because I would eventually like to do a little close-up of her because okay. she's just the cutest thing in the world. This is Jaden. Jaden has um, been with us the whole summer from Barry College through the Bonner Scholars Program. Right? So he's been helping us take care of animals, take care of the garden, and anything else we need done. Okay. All right. This is Tina, she's one of our board members and animal manager. Tina, this is Deborah. She's interviewing the garden for her YouTube channel this morning. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I've been giving her the tour and doing videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you too.
our trees in the front of the house. We've got our fig tree here, and then we've got about six other fig trees out in the front yard. Okay. So, we're going to have lots of figs. <laughs> Tons of room for activities for the kids. Like you bringing me something yeah, to eat. they're looking for snacks. Um, Hi is, there. <laughs> see they've all got their little bands on them. Oh, well, she's stretching for you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, we let them graze in the goat yard sometimes. Working with Animals Day, which mm -hmm. is an outreach fundraiser for children and youth to learn about volunteer and career opportunities in the animal field. So they will be there. You can take pictures of them. Oh, so. that's so cute! <laughs> so fuzzy! <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank I can show you some of our fruit trees. I can show you the pond. Yep. Whatever you would like to see. You figure with everything that you guys got going on here, the exposure that the kids are going to be able to learn from, you know, so definitely want to see everything. Yeah, totally. Good morning. Learning by doing is a big part of what we try to integrate into our education program. So for instance, this week is um, Farm Animal Week. Mm -hmm. So the kids got to hold chickens. They got to learn about how eggs are laid, um, do a milking simulation, oh. hang out with some of our donkeys. So they've <laughs> been doing it all this week. Guys, this is so amazing what the kids are learning in regards to gardening farm life and just taking ownership of nature these guys are doing an amazing job we've also been experimenting with grow bags this year so we had a overabundance of pepper plants so we put all of our oh. <laughs> It's amazing the amount of land that they have to allow kids to be able to experience a forgotten skill and having that exposure to being able to grow their own food. 
don't have the parents' permission, so I try not to get the little kids. Um, this dome area was designed by and gifted to us by a engineering firm. Um, so it's made of recycled billboard panels, and we use it for outdoor classroom space, uh, workshops, special events, birthday parties, all that stuff. Oh, nice. <laughs> As we were walking through here, all I could think about is the beauty of nature. This is our little pond area. It is a rain-fed pond. Oh. The quietest space on the property. Um, but we use this down here for education purposes. We do water sample collection, water testing. Wow. We look at the ecology and the wildlife that's in the pond. And then we also have a volunteer who's a wildlife researcher and she regularly comes and logs um, what sort of reptiles, amphibians, birds we have in the pond. So nice. It's pretty. Oh, pretty that is just really nice. Like I said, uh, the exposure that you guys are giving these young folks is just so amazing. So, well, let me ask you this. How can people help? Um, there are so many ways to help with the garden. Um, we are always looking for volunteers to help us with general garden maintenance, weeding, harvesting, um, lawn maintenance, anything that you have a skill or interest in, you name it, we need help with it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, volunteers are bread and butter and volunteering is probably the easiest way to help us. Uh, we also accept donations. so. We accept regular recurring donations, one-time donations, and those all go towards covering our operation costs because our ultimate goal is to keep all of our food free, all of our programs as low cost and accessible as possible. And then finally, if you are a business owner or know someone who has a business or a corporation that's interested in sponsoring us, we are always looking for yearly sponsors, sponsors for any of our special events, and um, in-kind donations for things like building supplies, construction materials, that sort of thing. Okay, now, is there uh, a site? Because I'd like to link it to this interview. That yes. way individuals can just go ahead and click on it. Yeah, so our website is ourgivinggarden.org and you can find all of our volunteer opportunities under the volunteer tab. And then you can find our um, sponsorship and support information under our About Us tab. Okay, perfect. Well, Hillary, I cannot thank you enough for giving me this time and walking me through the, the things that you guys are doing to help the community, to educate our young folks. You guys, I, I, I truly commend you for the dedication that you guys are showing to help out, like I said, our young people in the community. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Guys, I so love being able to spend time with Hillary and showcasing what they are doing for the community. As I stated, I'm going to put their information in the description along with their link. Any way you can help them out and help our children's future, I know they would so appreciate it. Thank you again for visiting Inspiring Garden Corner. Have a great garden day.